Good morning. How's everybody? Good? Great. Um, I am so excited to be back at uh, FETC. Uh, you have no idea. Um, I love this conference. Uh, it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I think this is my 10th year. Um, I think my fifth or fourth speaking. Um, and uh, I, I love it. I learned so much here. Uh, and you have to be a sponge because you absorb it, otherwise it's, it becomes overwhelming. Um, before we get started, though, uh, I started this last year. Um, last year we were in a really small room. Fire marshal came in halfway through, booted some people out. So uh, they gave me a bigger room, which is great. Um, but I'm gonna, my wife's not going to believe this, so I'm going to go ahead and take a selfie real quick, if that's okay with everybody. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and spin this baby around. There we go. Perfect, and I'll put that out on Twitter later on, all right, because uh, otherwise my wife doesn't believe me with these things. Um, welcome uh, to 60 and 60, um, 60 Instructional Technologies in 60 Minutes. It's a pretty fast-paced session. I'll explain the, uh, the rules here shortly. Um, my name is Mike Meach, and I'm the Assistant Principal of Instruction. I'm at Point Siena High School, which is right here in Kissimmee, Florida, um, Central Florida, um, part of the School District of Osceola County. I'm on Twitter, at Mike Meachin. Um, keep it simple. All right. I love to follow, follow me on there, uh, connect with me. If you have questions about any of the technologies we talk about, we don't have a lot of time to talk about what the uses of technology are. All right. We just get through the technologies. Um, but if you have any questions, please, uh, please let me know. I'll put up my contact information again at the end. Um, I always start with the reason why I do what I do, and these are uh, part of my reason. All right, these are my, uh, my kids, uh, uh, Jack and Kennedy, um, and uh, they are, are going to become, uh, they're two and four years old, but they're going to uh, go through a school system that is much different than the school system that we all went through. Um, these kids change by the minute, uh, sometimes by the second. Uh, my four-year-old can uh, go on my iPad, purchase an app from the iTunes store, and I've never showed him any of that. He just gets it. Um, and our kids are very much the same way. Uh, they did not grow up in classrooms uh, where uh, things were very much traditional, things were in rows, there was no exposure to technology, and those kind of things. So that is why I do the things that I do. It's why I'm in education. I believe in uh, breaking down the status quo, and technology is a piece of that puzzle um, that helps us in doing so. Um, I'm also a believer in this quote right here. Uh, as we shift our mindset in education, this is tough. Uh, I lead a faculty of over 100 teachers, and um, this is tough sometimes when you talk about this. But uh, Seth Godin had the quote, he said, open book, look it up all the time. Our students have access to information in ways that we did not. And we can't fault them for that. That's not their fault. All right, We have to let them embrace it and show them the responsible ways to use those technologies. And we also have to shift our teaching to align with that, that theory because our students are going to do it anyway, so we might as well embrace it in the classroom, all right? Uh, so it's a, it's a big time shift and a lot of the technologies we're gonna talk about today apply to that. Um, you know, our students, these are some of my students at Point Siena, and if you walk into my classrooms, many classrooms where that shift has happened, this is what you'll see on any given day. You know, the interaction with the mobile devices where a BYOD um, uh, school district, and uh, I work at a Title I high school. Uh, often Title I schools are places where people say it can't be done, and I would challenge that um, entirely. And if, if your students don't ha have access to devices, we've got to figure out ways to bring the devices into the classroom. And I'm uh, well versed in that. I've worked in Title I schools my entire career, um, so I'm more than happy to answer questions about that stuff as well. The last thing before we get going is I would challenge each of you because I was in sessions yesterday and some of the, the speakers took questions and often the question that comes up is, well, what if your district blocks this stuff? I work for a district that blocks some of this stuff we're gonna talk about today. And I would challenge you when you get back to your schools, if you find a technology and you think it's gonna benefit kids, you need to have tough conversations with the people who are, or make those decisions and you need to change it. If it's your principal, talk to your principal. If it's your, your IT people at the district, talk to your IT people. If it's a superintendent of schools, schedule an appointment and have those conversations. And I would, I would challenge each of you to do that. If you find a technology, don't give up on it because your district won't allow it. 
You have to push it. Sometimes they'll still say no, but keep pushing, okay? So strategy for today, listen very carefully. You don't have to write anything down, okay? This is a technology conference. I wouldn't do that to you, all right? You don't have to write anything down. You don't need to type anything. At the end of this session, if you go to myfetc.org, you go to this session, you join it, the link will be there. I'm going to give you a Google document. It's going to have all 60 technologies with the link for each of them, okay? So don't write anything down. The strategy for watching this session, though, is to look at the technologies. We're going to move quick once I get going. Find out the ones that appeal to you and jot those ones down so you can come back when, you, when I email out the Google document to find those technologies and look at those a little bit deeper, okay? Best way to, to, to work to find out how technologies are used or the best way to use them is to play around with them themselves, all right? You ready? Okay, here we go, all right? First one is a URL shortener called Bitly, okay? If you've ever been in a classroom with 25 or more students and you get a, a forward slash incorrect and it becomes a backward slash, all chaos ensues, okay? So you have to use a URL shortener to take those large URLs that you write up on your whiteboard and shorten them. I like Bitly because it's free and it lets you customize URLs as well. So I always use my last name and then whatever it is we're talking about to customize the URL to whatever we're doing in the classroom. That's Bitly. Next one is Furly. It's like Bitly on steroids, okay? I love this one because what it does is it allows you to take all of the URLs from multiple web pages, put them into Furly, and then click Submit. And what it will do is it will actually take all of those websites, all right, and it will give you one link. And then what, the one link, once it's created and you enter the code, by the way, you're gonna, every single technology I'm going to talk about today, you're going to see a screencast up on the screen of me using the technology, okay? I think it's the best way for you guys to see it. But it gives you that one URL, and then you pop it into your, your uh, address bar, and then it Furley gives you that little navigation bar at the top where the students simply navigate from one to the other. So it's simply just a click, and it takes them from all, through all the web pages that you've added. And you can add as many as you want. Um, I love this one. It's very simple, easy to use when you need to share multiple websites, which we often do. Next one is Twitter. If I'm gonna, I say this every single year. If you are not on Twitter and you are an educator, you need to change that before you leave this room today. Twitter is the, it may not be the coolest thing anymore, but it is the most effective tool for educators right now to get ideas. All right, if you're not on there and you haven't learned how to use hashtags, you need to do that. You need to find out what, whatever content area you teach. There, there are chats weekly about all of those things where educators from around the world are sharing resources. And if you're missing out on it, I'll tell you what, you're making your job a heck of a lot harder. So if you're not on Twitter, before you leave this room today, I'm telling you what, you better be on there, okay? And I expect to follow, all right? That's your assignment. Um, the next one is called Twitter Fall. What it does, I often use this in the classroom where you could, I had a classroom hashtag so my students could post questions to the classroom hashtag. What Twitter fall does is it searches for a hashtag on Twitter and then it presents it in this fall or Twitter fall, all right, and you can expand it, make it nice and big. So students in real time could back channel, post questions about the, um, the lesson. I oftentimes would not show this to my students, but I would have this running on my laptop so that at the end of the day, if they had questions about the session, it's the exit ticket out the door virtually. So they could post their questions, they pull out their device, ask their question, put that Twitter hashtag in there, and then I had all the questions from the day or from a particular unit of study. I like Twitter fall. It's simple. It's easy to use. You'll see that as a common theme throughout many of the technologies I'm going to talk about. Another one, visible tweets does the same thing. It just makes it look pretty. All right? So if you're into that, this would be your technology for that. It's called visible tweets. Edmodo. All right? This drives content for most of, my, most of my teachers in my building. If you've not extended your content to the web, you need to do so. Our students are 24-7, and if we are not providing content to them 24-7, we need to change that, okay? Students will do homework at 3 a.m. They're weird creatures. That's just what they do, all right? And we have to make sure that we have the ability to extend that content so that they can access it whenever it is that they want to consume it. If it's at 2 a.m., that's what it is, all right? But if we don't extend that content, trust me, they're not going to crack open a, a, a textbook at 2 a.m. They may jump on a moto and post an assignment virtually. It's just engaging. That's what they, that's what they do. 
Our students are immersed in technology and one of the, mo one of the least, they're, they're least immersed to technology in schools. And we can't have that anymore. We have to change that. It's a key piece and Edmodo is a great tool. This is called Novio. It lets you put your slide deck up and a video of you talking at the same time. So you can scroll through the slide deck and have your, uh, your, your video up there as well. It's very simple to use. 99.99% um, of the technologies I'm talking about today are free or free to educators with a special educator account. So Novio is a great technology for that. Okay? What you guys are seeing are screencasts. If you want to create your own screencast, I use a, a software called Camtasia. Um, it's a little bit different and it's a paid version, but um, this one is called Screener. It's free. It lets you do the same thing and then export that video and we'll give you a link to share it as well. And then also Screencast-O-Matic uh, is another one. An example of use, I used to, my students would blog in my classroom and I would sometimes pull their blogs up instead of giving them verbal feedback or written feedback. Um, I, would, I would go ahead and pull their, uh, their blog up and then screencast my feedback to them and then email it to them and their minds were blown. How did you do that? What did, you took time to record yourself talking, looking at my blog? Yeah, it was way easier than taking a red pen to paper, okay? It's, it's about being, making your job easier and technology can do that for us. It's an awesome, awesome tool for that. Um, Prezi changed my life in the classroom. I don't know if you've ever been in, in a classroom and you've used PowerPoint, uh, especially at the high school and probably the middle school level as well, but you throw up some bullet points up there and then you're like, everybody done writing? Can I move on? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? And then you look at their notes, right? And their notes look exactly the same way as your slide does. We're not teaching kids how to write notes. So I shifted to Prezi. My students were pissed off because they no longer have bullet points to copy. These are talking points for me. They're not for them. These are talking points for me to deliver content to them. And they no longer had long lists to copy down. They truly had to listen to the words that were coming out of my mouth and shift the way that they take notes. Um, and for me, this was, this was a game changer for me in the classroom because I thought about it more of as a concept map that I can zoom and move around as opposed to giving them bullet points, which I know that they're just copying word for word and that I'm not doing anything with, okay? So Prezi for me was a game changer and it's an often overlooked uh, technology. Haiku Deck is a new technology that's been out there for a little while. They've recently shifted to a desktop version they use templates, very simple, easy to use templates, where if you wanted to do that same thing, it is the, it is the, the PowerPoint killer, okay, where they could come out and they shift you away from, from these PowerPoint or bullet points and shift you to more concepts. So if you're, if you're not comfortable with that, Haiku Deck is a great way to do it because they provide so many templates for you to use. All right, um, today's meet. Another great technology for back channeling. Does a very similar, uh, similar uh, purpose that that Twitter fall does or using a classroom hashtag. So today's meet, you can uh, have the students join a room and you can choose how long you want your room to be available for. It can be room available for an hour, a week, a month, whatever. All right? And uh, the students can post questions there. Again, this was my virtual exit ticket. So if students had questions about whatever we were talking about in class, this was a great way for them to be able to post questions and for me to address those questions the following day in class. Uh, I'm going to go through a series of Google technologies because I'm a big believer in the, the company and I like what they do because they're, they're, it's free, all right? You, can, you, can't, you can't like it any, uh, it, it, I love free, all right? Google Books um, is very simple, easy to use. A lot of the stuff that's there is, is free. Um, some of our older content, some novels that you may have in your, in your school that are beat up. Swift, switch to mobile devices. Let the kids read the books um, online and there's some, some great pieces that are there entirely free uh, for students to be able to consume. Uh, Google Voice, right? If it, it's like Remind, and I'm going to talk about Remind in a little bit, but it gives you that two-way communication piece without having to share your number with students. I've seen a wide variety of uses for Google Voice where uh, teachers change, a, they record a new message every day to give homework assignments. And students that are out, they can simply call the, call the number, listen to the voicemail, they know what was done in class that day. I'm all about limiting excuses for students not to do stuff, all right? And I think we can all, we probably all have that issue. And technology can help us limit excuses. Oh, I'm sorry, you were out today? Uh, the internet was still there, okay? So we, got, we, can, we can access it, 
All right, we just need to figure out ways to get that to the, the students. It, this is, can be used in, in many, many different ways, all right, and connect with parents as well. Google Drive, there's a million, million things out there. Dropbox, Google Drive, they're all good, but if you're still carrying around that flash drive, um, Anthony Cook, one of my school counselors, is actually in the room. Um, he could tell you about uh, uh, losing flash drives with all of your life's work on it, all right? So make sure that you're, if you're still using that, switch so you can, you can do that. We do all of our classroom walkthroughs um, in my building uh, through Google Docs, and we're able to give feedback to, student, uh, to teachers uh, very quickly, and we like that. Uh, Google Maps is beautiful, all right? And uh, you could take kids anywhere in the world virtually. So there's no excuse. Title I school often funds for us, they're limited. And we have to really be strategic about where we, where we spend our money. So using the, the internet and our, our students' devices, my teachers can take them anywhere we want. So there's really no excuse. And I'm going to show you some, some cooler things that, that Google's doing with this technology that will even let you take it um, a little bit further. Google Scholar is a search engine simply for uh, scholarly journal articles or case law. All right? I'm a, I'm a social, was a social studies teacher by trade. So for me, this was great. We can go in. They could search Brown versus the Board of Education. It's going to take out all the nonsense and just give them the case law on that particular article. So Google Scholar is a great way to kind of to take out some of the, the fluff that's there when you do just a normal Google search. My district, we still purchase, like, I don't know why we still pay for search engines. Those aren't going to be there for students when they leave us and graduate on to college. So we need to teach them responsible use and how to use search engines like Google because that's what they're going to do. It's a verb now. Google it. I mean, they're good. that's what they're going to do, okay? And we have to teach them the right way to do that. Uh, Google has partnered with Life Magazine, and every single picture that's been in any Life Magazine ever is available for you to see online. Obviously, this is cross-content. It's not isolated just to social studies. If I'm talking about an author, I'm going to pull up a picture of that author. If I'm talking about a scientist, I'm going to pull up a picture of that scientist and give our kids some relation. What's this guy look like? And they're going to ask some crazy questions. Why does that guy look that way? You know, why do they dress that way? You could have some great conversations before you lead into any content in any content area. A Google Calendar for us at my school is life-changing. We sync our calendars, uh, we work off of our calendars, and if we didn't have it, we wouldn't know where people were on any given day. And if, you don't, if you're not sharing calendars with the people that you work with, you need to start that. Also, there's some other technologies now that have taken it up a notch, where you can now take your calendar and you can do some things. This is called You Can Book Me. And you can book me. My school counselors use this. So if students now want to schedule appointments with them, they do this electronically. Okay? So they go on. They schedule their appointment with their counselor. It gives them a nice little pass on their mobile device, which now they show their teacher. That's their confirmation. And then they leave pass class that way. There's no fooling around because my counselors have the ability to, to disapprove or, or cancel an appointment. So that, at that point, their, their appointment's no good. We love this technology. Once they sync it with their Google Calendar, this automatically puts the appointments right on their Google Calendar. We love it. It's awesome. All right, game changer. There's another one called Calendly. Does the same thing, just looks prettier. Okay? I'm about prettier, and I use this, and I schedule all my evaluation meetings, all this, through this, and I send out the links. You can see the interface looks a little bit different, um, but it's so, it's so easy to use. And again, as soon as somebody schedules an appointment, boom, right there on your Google Calendar, and you're good to go. All right, it's not isolated to Google Calendar. Both those things can be uh, synced with iCal and all that stuff as well. Okay, um, Eventbrite, take kind of more on that scheduling piece. We wanted to give our, our parents access to our campus and to events, and we wanted to make it real easy for them, and we also wanted to project how many people we were going to have. We often have food at a lot of our events. It brings them in, and we wanted to know that, so we use Eventbrite for that. So our, our students and parents can sign up for our nightly, uh, our, our, our FAFSA nights, and all those things through Eventbrite. It gives them a ticket. Uh, they use their mobile device. We can actually use a, it gives everybody a QR code on their ticket, so we can actually scan them as well, and that's our attendance log. It's awesome. Um, we love it. And our students actually use this. This is how we do uh, college visits now at our school. So if we want students to be able to schedule time for college visits, and then one of my, uh, my college and career counselors, she just scans them as they come in, that's our attendance log for we know what students have been there and have not, okay? Um, S'more, virtual flyers. 
So if you want to be able to integrate and make, you have clubs and organizations, you want to be able to make a quick flyer that you can send out or post the link on your website. What I like about S'more is it gives the ability uh, for you to add maps and things like that uh, very easily. So if you want to promote athletic events that may be away, uh, you can do that. You can just simply type in the, the date, the address, and it will give you uh, links that will automatically go right into your flyer. Um, and it looks really cool and it's very simple and easy to use. Another free technology. Storybird. This is one of the coolest technologies that's out there. And writing, obviously, for us in the state of Florida is a huge, huge initiative. I think it is everywhere, all right? But Storyboard, what they do is they curate uh, professional illustrations. And the students can pick the set of illustrations that they want to work with, put them into a book, and then write the story that goes along with the illustrations. So we use it often in our creative writing class. And also just the ability for students to be able to go whatever way they want. And there's a new feature on it where now they can actually collaboratively write with one other person, um, which I really like. So I, lo I love this feature. The illustrations are amazing. And the students can take the story whatever way they want. Um, so really, really cool a way. And they, they don't have to focus on drawing anymore either. They focus on the writing only, which is a, is a key piece. Um, Scriffin. I'm a big believer. And before Florida shifted away from Common Core, um, we, there, was a, there, were, there were anchor standards. And, and one of them was about publishing content to the web. And a very easy way for you to publish content to the web is a website called Scriffin. So if you don't want to go the blog route and have all this complex uh, user accounts and permissions and things like that, Scriffin is one of the easiest ways to post content. It gives you a link. That's your link. You'll be able to post your work. It's neat. It's clean. It's very easy to use. Um, and there's not a lot of bells and whistles to it. So I like Scriffin a lot to publish content to the web. This is called Writer Igniter. It's a, basically a slot machine for writing prompts. Okay. It'll give you character, situation, prop, and setting. All right? I love this. It gets the, gets the juices flowing. All right? And actually, you could use this. Um, you could use this in collaboration with uh, Storybird or something like that. Goodreads is the Netflix for uh, books. Okay? So if you want a recommendation on what you need to read next, you need to plug your books into Goodreads, and it will give you suggestions based on the things that you're reading. Your students obviously can utilize this as well um, to let them know. Uh, what they can read um, next and how it, uh, what, what's coming up. So I love the fact that they can do it, break it down by category and things like that. So just like Netflix, I love it. Wolfram Alpha is a computation engine. It's not a search engine, all right? You search specific terms, and then what it does is it goes out, it searches the web, and pulls those, and it searches for those specific answers. So if I wanted to see what the mortality rate is in Afghanistan, I go out and search it. But it's not going to give me Google websites that are going to tell me that. It's actually going to give me the answers that I'm looking for. All right? And then I can also add additional information there. And it will take the, all that information, put them together, and give it to me there uh, in one nice area. So if I wanted to do a verse in the United States, it's going to give it to me. It's going to search the web for me and then provide that information for me. Paperly, paper.li, all right, allows you to take a hashtag on Twitter, hashtag FETC, for example. All right? And it allows you to take all of that information. It will search Twitter or look for people that are talking about that hashtag. And then it will take all of that information and it will put it into an easy to use newspaper format, which then you can share uh, through a link. Okay? I was doing this at my school and then my district blocked it, all right? uh, which is I'm working on. All right? But it's an amazing technology to be able to, uh, to search out there. You could search hashtag uh, edtech. And it will bring all the technology articles into one URL. You share that with your staff. They have a nice to look at newspaper that has all that information that's available on Twitter right there for them in one place. CK12 is providing online content. There's a lot of curriculum material here, but also textbooks. Okay? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm shifting. Uh, we have a lot of old textbooks. Our textbook adoptions are getting further and further apart. So my, my teachers, I recommend them using uh, these uh, CK12 to access updated information all right, about whatever content area that they're teaching. And um, it's, it's nice, it's easy to use. They're short reading assignments, which tend to work better with our students if we give them that information in shorter chunks. If you don't know, if you're a math, how many math teachers? Any math teachers in here? Okay, Dan Meyer, all right, if you don't know who Dan Meyer is and his website about 3 Axe Math, this is taking math instruction to a whole new level. It is the anti-do-40-problems-odd, all right, 
and uh, turn them into me. I'll be at my desk if you need some assistance, all right? It, it, it makes, it challenges students to, uh, to, to really think and really problem solve in the mathematics classroom. It's not an area that I'm comfortable with at all. I married a math teacher for that exact reason, all right? Um, but it, it, he also has things aligned to common core state standards as well. Uh, he's now left the classroom. He was a former math teacher. Uh, now he's a, a PhD candidate at Stanford University, but his stuff, Dan Meyer, three acts math, amazing, amazing stuff for the mathematics classroom. Uh, Learn Zillion is like the Khan Academy, but a little bit more aligned to, um, uh, to the Common Core standards. Uh, all of the lessons are done by uh, former Teach for America uh, teachers, um, and they've gone through, it, the, the, the information is there. It's very similar to how Khan Academy is used. There now is a back end as well where you can create classes and things like that in there. Very similar to what Khan Academy, I know a lot of people know about Khan. That's why I choose uh, to show Learn Zillion. Virtual Nerd is another one that we are beginning to use for tutoring. Tutoring opportunities for us is tough. A lot of my students don't have transportation to stay after school. So we're, again, extending that content to the web and Virtual Nerd is a very easy, to do that, uh, easy way to do that. We are going to begin using it uh, as one of our solutions for SAT, ACT prep, because um, that's important to us. But I like this website in particular because it doesn't just show a video. Every single video has a teacher in it as well with a whiteboard. And I think there's some importance to that. I like it better when I watch it to see the teacher do the math um, or whatever it is that they're talking about. And I like Virtual Nerd for that reason in particular. Stat Finder or Stat Map, Stat World, all right? They have a couple different websites, but you can find any statistic on anything that is out there in a nice data visualization for you. So if you're using data in, in the classroom, and this is at really any grade level you can, it's just going to give you the numbers, but you, it's very simple, very easy to use, and it, you could take it as deep as you want to, but literally any statistic, if you want to know how many cell phone users there are in, in Kuwait, you can do that. They have the statistics for it. How many people have internet access um, in, a, in a particular uh, third world country, you can do that, and you have data and statistics. The nice part is you can go back in time, and it will show you how those statistics have changed uh, over time and you can play it and it will show you and then highlight the map uh, and it will change. I like this a lot. Uh, math, math teachers in particular, uh, my science teachers, we love to be able to get our hands on data that's fun to manipulate. Um, the timeline of art history run by the Met uh, is a great website if you're showing uh, art or, or, or talking about a specific time period. The pieces that are here, they're high resolution so you don't get grainy pictures. Um, it tells a, a history about each piece that's there, and they have art that has gone dated back from caveman drawings all the way forward. So you can literally find any time, uh, time period that you're talking about. It will talk about the geography of the region it came from. There's a ton of information. It's one of the best uh, art websites out there um, to be able to get information for your students. Timeline JS. This is a really cool uh, program. It gives you a, a, a Google document that you can plug data into. And what it will do is it will look at all the data. So you're talking about your, your, your start date, end date, uh, what you want it to say for a headline, the text you want it to include. If there's a link or video that you want to show, um, you can put it there. Uh, you can put where you got your source from. And then it puts it into this data, um, this website. And then it will actually give you a link and it's going to take all that stuff that I had in the spreadsheet, and as soon as I click Submit, which is going to be here in a second, all right, is going to take all that information and give you a nice, clean timeline that looks like this. All right? And the kids can scroll through. So I love the way that it takes all that data in a spreadsheet and gives you that beautiful visualization. You can have YouTube videos and everything right there for you, uh, easy to access on timelines. It's one of the best timeline tools that's out there. This is one of my personal favorites. Somebody asked me in the front row what my, what my favorite technology is. This is one of the coolest. The Google Art Project, they have, they have taken their Street View technology and they've brought it to museums, okay? And they've basically taken pictures of the museums where now you literally, without leaving the classroom, can walk around the museum. One of the things they have is the White House. So you can click on the wall and it will move you over to that portion of the room. All right? And you could take a walk around the White House without ever having to go to the White House or get security clearance or anything like that. And you could bring your students there. And it's one of the easiest ways to do it. I just think it's super cool. All right? 
um, and I, our teachers are using that. Street View is another way. They've expanded this um, tremendously. So they, they have national parks here. They have a ton of different stuff, zoos, television studios, where they've gone in, they've used their Street View technology, um, and they're, they're giving you a nice snapshot of different areas. This is a picture of the northern lights. You can scroll up and down. You can look down, up, sideways, whatever you want. Um, and it's, it's just a really, really cool technology uh, to bring into your classroom. Study Blue is online uh, flashcards. And what I like about it is the students can build flashcards for anything that they want to, but then they put a stack together. And once their stacks of, of flashcards are together, they're able to quiz themselves so they can run it, uh, run it through. So it's very simple. You pull your cards up, so states and capitals, you want to flip through, and then you'll indicate through the, the either the thumbs up or thumbs down whether you got it right or wrong. The nice part is Study Blue automatically takes the ones that you got wrong and retests you on them. Um, so it's a really cool, unique technology. I love the interface. This company is devoted to education, and I like that. I love companies that are devoted to education. I'm all about them. It will give you that data at the end so students can see what they need to come back and, and retest on. So really, really cool use of, uh, of flashcards online. Uh, Ted, if, you've not, if, you're, if you go to school, like I often do on a Monday morning, and you're like, man, it's Monday morning. All right, my first bell rings at 7 a.m. So sometimes I got to get in a little early and throw up a TED video. I'm ready to go after that. It doesn't even matter what it's on. Every single speaker is amazing, all right? And, uh, you know, if you need that inspiration or your students need that inspiration, check out some of these videos. They're short, all right? But there's some amazing ones. There are some amazing ones on education. Uh, Rita Pearson, in particular, her video on Every Student Needs a Champion. Uh, is one of my favorites. Um, it's an it's ama absolutely amazing video. Uh, Ken Robinson does some amazing stuff in education. So if you need that pick-me-up ever, Ted. Uh, they've extended their reach uh, to the classroom specifically. And if you go to TED Ed, all right, they've built lesson plans with highly engaging videos. I cannot tell you how much it bothers me when I walk into a classroom and we're showing a video from like 1983. And if I'm having a problem with that, the 14-year-old kids sitting in your classroom are having a problem with that. TED Ed fixes that problem. High impact, short, engaging videos that tie into lesson plans um, and curated by, by TED. I like this a lot. And if you've not checked it out, um, I think it's one of the hidden gems out there. I think it's one of the best, uh, best technologies out there right now. Wordle. All right, I know you've seen it before. If you're previewing content, this is the best way to do it. All right? It creates a word cloud. If you've never seen Wordle, you put some text in there, and it creates a word cloud for you. The algorithm that Wordle uses, it, it looks at all the words that are there, so the, the preamble to the Constitution, which is up on the screen for you, all right? and it, the algorithm looks at the words and how many times those words are mentioned. If a word is mentioned more, it blows the word up larger than others. So if you're previewing content, we could talk, have a whole con uh, conversation about the Constitution of the United States right here with this word cloud, previewing text. What do you think this is going to be about? Why do you think it's that way? All right, before we even look at the text itself. So amazing, uh, amazing tool for you to preview content. If you're using news in the classroom or current events, news maps, one of the best technologies out there. It gives you that information. It puts it in a map. And you can, uh, based on the, the, the boxes at the bottom, you can pick and choose what, what you want to focus on. So if you want to take some things out, if you want to take entertainment news out, you can. If you want to change countries, you're more than welcome to. And then it will link out to, uh, to different um, websites. Museum, I, I, this one will never leave my 60 and 60 because I love it. What they do, they do a lot of things. But one of the coolest things they do is they take images of, of headline or the front page of newspapers from around the world. They have 800 newspapers every single day that they publish the front page of. So my foreign language teachers, I'm getting them to use this a lot because they can, they can, take, they can bring their kids to Paris, check out the newspaper, the front page of the newspaper today. Um, it gives you that visual, visualization. You can go in, pull up the actual digitized copy. I have no idea how they do this every single day, but it's like magic, and I love it. And uh, the museum, and again, again, you can search by map if you want to. And uh, 800 newspapers every single day. It's absolutely amazing that they're able to do that. It blows my mind. Remind. You've probably heard a lot about Remind. And if you're not using it, it's, it's a powerful tool. 
All right, great way to communicate with parents and students. We use it in a broad, uh, wide variety of, 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 of ways. One of the coolest ways that we're using it right now is we actually have started to use it with our at-risk attendance students. And we send them wake-up messages every morning, three times. And we start at 5.45 in the morning, all right? And we send them three blasts every 15 minutes, every single morning. And the only way you can get off the remind list is to come to school, all right? Once your attendance improves, we'll take you off, all right? So a lot of people think like, man, I've heard about remind. Okay, but you can use some of these tools to do some really cool things that will impact your school, and that's what it's all about. Classroom Dojo, classroom management tool, some of my teachers are using this. They absolutely love it. A lot of people think it's just for elementary because the monsters and things like that. Absolutely not. Um, I'm not a big believer in getting those, keeping those participation grades and behavior grades in the grade book. I think the grade book's just for whether or not students are mastering standards. This is a great way for my teachers to be able to track behavior and participation. We also could have the ability to tie it into our positive behavior support system, our PBS system as well. So we really like Classroom Dojo. Kahoot. All right, game-based learning, uh, very similar to Socrative, um, things like that, but, you, but it takes it to the game version. If you've ever walked, anybody used Kahoot? Good. If you walk into a classroom that's using Kahoot, they all look the same. It's complete insanity, all right? But it's, it, is, it is organized chaos. I know for a fact this technology works because if you go into a classroom where it's being used, every single kid is engaged. It's exciting. It plays dramatic music at the same time while you're waiting for you to answer questions. It's an amazing piece of technology. I highly recommend it. Great way to review information in class. Okay, Evernote, if you're not using Evernote, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful tool. Uh, this is a picture of their offices. I wanted to show this instead of a screencast because I want to do this in my school. Their walls are whiteboards in their office. What a, what a cool working environment for you. Can you imagine if we had classrooms where the walls were whiteboards, all right, and you create anything in that space. It's absolutely amazing. I love this company. They are committed to education. There's a wide uh, use for their, their, their software, um, but it's an amazing, amazing system. I love that it's cross-platform. I can go write a note in a classroom. I can go back to my office, and boom, it's there. All right? And to quote Steve Jobs, it just works, and I like that. I love technology that just works. Socrative, a lot of people have seen Socrative, but the ability and the power of it to disaggregate data and give your, your students and yourself instant feedback, is it cannot be overlooked, and that's why it will always stay in my 60 and 60. One of the newer technologies that's moving on there is Exit Ticket, and it does a very similar thing. There's a little bit steeper learning curve with Exit Ticket. However, you can see the data that you get there. That's a data dashboard, a teacher version of, a te of the, the data dashboard is absolutely amazing. Um, they, the way that they disaggregate data is incredible. Again, the learning curve is a little bit steeper. The front end setup of getting your students loaded in is a little bit more time consuming, but it's very, very powerful tool. This is called Plickers. Um, Plickers is, I, this still blows my mind every time. So students hold up these, basically, they're kind of like QR codes, and you'll see the teacher dashboard is going to just scan it with their camera, and it's going to take the answers, and it's going to give it to the teacher in real time. So it's taking technology. So if you don't have devices in your classroom and kids can't access Socrative or they can't access um, uh, you know, uh, Exit Ticket, this is a really cool alternative. One device is all it takes, and it gives you that data. It's called Plickers. Mind blown. I don't understand how that works. That's incredible. All right? I love it. Educanon lets you take video, all right, and then tie in questions. You'll see the play bar down the bottom and then the, the orange marks. And what it does is when it gets to one of the orange marks, it's actually going to stop the video and ask a question of students. So you can show a video, upload content there, and then plug in your questions for students to be able to answer. All right, I love this technology. It's a super cool use. This kid president up here, but the ability to be able to tie those questions right into the content and to let students on their own devices watch it on their own time is an amazing piece of uh, technology. Big History Project. All right, they have put uh, from the, the 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 dawn of man to now available free uh, for anybody to use with an amazing uh, uh, amazing pieces of curriculum that are there for you. 
It is not just for a history teacher. There, are, there is data there. There's a lot of things that can be done cross content. So check out Big History Project. It's one of my uh, favorite pieces as well. Canva, all right, is an amazing design software or free web-based platform which will help you if, with, if you're designing PowerPoints, if you need a new web logo, if you want to redo your social media campaign at your school. It has templates for you just to simply plug your information in and use their designs and then download those slides. And it's completely free. They also have a design school which talks about you know, how to build better presentations and I'm all about that. If it's going to help with student engagement, I'm all about it. Common curriculum all right, is a really cool, uh, really cool website for lesson planning. It lets you build your lesson plans, it ties into your state standards and it's all drag and drop so you can simply manipulate your lesson plans by if you didn't get to something one day you just take it and drag it over to the next day. All right, very, very cool. It's been put, it was uh, put together by uh, Baltimore City Public School Teachers. Um, very, very cool software. There's a free version for individual teachers. If you're looking at site licensing, it gets very, very expensive. But to be perfectly honest with you, there's really no need. If you use it, with, uh, if you use it as an individual for teacher lesson planning, you can share your lesson plans with one other person. So if you wanted to share them with your administrator, you can simply type their email address in. Boom, they're going to get a copy of it. It's really, really cool software. It's called Common Curriculum. Um, GradeCam. This has shifted how we do business at Point Sienna High School in terms of disaggregating data. So what you're seeing up here is we, we print these, uh, these answer keys and then you're seeing me grade it. I simply hold it in front of my webcam. It scores the test like that, gives us our data immediately into our data dashboard. That data can be shared within our PLCs. So my biology teachers share all their data with one another. It also broke down barriers because we have a tough time having conversations about you know, well, this is my grade book. You can't see my grade book. Well, I can't move the school forward if we can't look at grades and assessment data. We talked about, you know, how do we break down those barriers? GradeCam has done it because now everybody has access to everybody's stuff. And those conversations now that are happening in my school are amazing. We're talking about, hey, man, I see you got 64% proficiency. I got 82. Let me talk about some of the things that I'm doing. To get, to get to that point. And to see that happen is amazing. GradeCam is the reason why we're there. All right, we're doing some really cool stuff with that. News ELA, unbelievable. I love this website, all right? It, it, current events, so they are staying as current as they possibly can. We also have licenses for Achieve 3000. I'm, not, I'm, I'm nothing against Achieve, but News ELA is doing a very similar thing. You can break it down by Lexile scores on the right-hand side so you can see the Lexiles. So I, if I have different readers in the classroom, what better way to differentiate? I can print out the same article at different Lexile levels, let my kids read the same article, have the same conversation. They do it all for you and they stay, or stay current. If the article has a light bulb with it, they've already developed a quiz that goes along with that reading. So it's an amazing, amazing website. Again, if you sign up for a free account, all right, you can access all of their content. Very, very cool. News ELA. Word Lens. This just boggles my mind. We're using this for our ELL students. Watch this. This is so cool. So if you have uh, some, some foreign language, you take your device, and it simply translates it for you. This is a game changer, OK? Google Translate is also getting ready to, to unleash this technology as well. But we're using it with our ELL students. And I mean, they're, they got their devices out, and they're, it's incredible, all right? Absolute game changer. It's like magic. Love it. OK, this is called Reflector, all right? Reflector is a, is a program that allows you to mirror whatever you're doing on your device. Android, iPhone, doesn't matter. Mirror whatever you're doing on your device and be able to, to display it. So you're seeing what I'm doing on my, on my, uh, my iPhone, all right? And it's a very simple, as long as it shares a Wi-Fi connection, you run Reflector on your, your, uh, your device, and then you're able to share uh, whatever device you're using and looking, looking around. And you can show the camera. You can do whatever you want on it. So anything you're doing on your device, you're able to share uh, through, through Reflector. Okay? Um, that is 60 technologies in less than 60 minutes. So. Thank you. It, uh, it, is, it is very important to me, before I let you all go, please, uh, it is important to all the speakers here to fill out the evaluations for the sessions. Uh, it's what keeps us coming back. 
Um, it's what gives us access to larger audiences. So please, uh, if you have any questions, this is my contact information. I come out to schools. I work with teachers. Um, please let me know. I'm more than happy to come out and visit if you need to contact me. My blog is up there. My email address is up there. My Twitter handle is up there. I am presenting uh, later on this afternoon at 1 o'clock right next door with a team of my educators from my school. We're talking about some technologies you've definitely heard of, but we're talking about our use, and we have some unique uses uh, of those technologies. So come out, check us out. We'll be at 1 o'clock uh, right next door in, in S310EF. Okay? It's called uh, Technology for School-Wide Impact. We're going to look at how to use technology at a school-wide level instead of just in the classroom. So if you're here with a team of people, bring them all out. Guys, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.